Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. He reigns. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Good morning, Brother Robert. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He reigns. He reigns. Hallelujah. For all of our days, he reigns. Glory to God. Bless your name this morning, God. Hallelujah. We've been missing. Well, not missing, I guess. I've been on vacay. Uh, and then uh, last week, my camera decided it didn't want to work so hallelujah god we thank you we got one minute in the name of jesus god we love you this morning hallelujah thank you for restoring our people god thank you for restoring your people god joan and robert and and Yvette, God, and Q, God, and Julia, God. Hallelujah. Tracy this morning, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a restorer, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a restorer of the breach. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. That the part that the enemy got past, God, because he had a foothold, God, in the name of Jesus, God, the little foxes were able to come in and eat up our finances and eat at our health and eat at relationships and marriages, God. Thank you for being a restorer of the breach this morning. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for being a restorer, God, of the mistakes we've made and the things we've done and the people we've heard and the things we've said, God. Thank you for being a restorer this morning. Thank you for being a forgiving God this morning. Hallelujah, God. Thank you that your forgiveness reigns, God. Your forgiveness is above all other forgiveness, God. And so we need you this morning to teach us how to forgive. Thank you for being a restorer of the breach, God. Thank you for being a restorer store and a lifter up and a putting back together of the parts that fell down and fell apart around our lives, God. Hallelujah, God. Credit. Hallelujah. That fell down and, and fell apart, God, because of bad decisions or bad connections or bad interactions and bad deals, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for being a forgiving God because you told us not to do that. Hallelujah, and we did it anyway. Or we, we didn't have a clear answer, but we went ahead and did it anyway. So, God, we thank you this morning for being a restorer of the breach, God. We thank you this morning, God. Hallelujah, restorer of our health, a restorer of our mind, God. Hallelujah. God, of the person who is depressed or bipolar or schizophrenic, God, or, or suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, God, whatever their issue is this morning, that their mind is attacking them, God, telling them that they're not great, God, that they don't have purpose, God. Oh, God, we come against the spirit of fear, for you have not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. We thank you for the mind of Christ this morning. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus, who thought it not be equal to to call to call himself God but he humbled himself he humbled himself hallelujah God thank you for the humbling this morning that will bring the answers into our lives oh God thank you for the humbling this morning that will bring answers into our lives this morning thank you for the humbling of the ear gate Hallelujah, God. The eye gate, God. Hallelujah for what they will see and what they will hear from your word this morning will bring greater understanding of why we fear our greatness. Why do we fear our greatness in the name of Jesus, God? Hallelujah. It's all rooted in fear. It's all rooted in fear. So, God, I thank you for restoring the breach to build us up, God, in our most holy faith, God, to build us up, God, in knowing our greatness, to build us up in our purpose, God, to build us up, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, to say I'm sorry, to say forgive me, to say help me. Hallelujah, God. We pull down pride this morning that won't ask for help. We pulled down pride this morning that won't ask for help. Hallelujah. Because the enemy has tricked them into thinking, God, that that's a sign of weakness. Ah, oh, God, but we love you this morning. We thank you, God, that we are humbled by the truth, God. Hallelujah, God, that the, the gates of hell will not prevail against us, oh God. Hallelujah, because we have the truth and it is the truth that will set us free. Hallelujah. That will open those gates, oh God, that will allow us to be released. 
that will allow us to go forth and do what you called us to do. God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for being a restorer. We thank you for being a keeper. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a keeper this morning. Woo, Jesus. Thank you for being a keeper. Hey, God, thank you for being a keeper. Hallelujah. Keeping me from myself. Keeping us from ourselves. Oh, God, for that descent, for that decision somebody wanted to make and you said not so. You're not going to do that. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a keeper. Thank you for being a protector. Thank you for the hedge of protection that is around us. Hallelujah. Thank you for, hallelujah, God. Thank you for the gates. Uh, hallelujah, God, that the devil cannot prevail against. Uh, hallelujah, God. We thank you for your protection. Thank you, God, that you are our stronghold. Hallelujah. We hide behind you. We don't hide behind bricks of unforgiveness and bricks of bitterness. Hallelujah. Bricks, God, of doubt and bricks of unbelief and bricks of the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. You are our stronghold and our stronghold in you is truth. Hallelujah, our stronghold in you is greatness. Hallelujah, our stronghold in you is power. Our stronghold in you is an anointing. Our stronghold in you is destiny. God, we thank you that you are our stronghold this morning. Glory to the King. Bless your name this morning. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you for being a restorer of the breach. <coughs> Thank you that our ears are open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to us, the church. God, we appropriate the blood over every doorpost, over every gate. Hallelujah on our bodies, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we appropriate the blood. Hallelujah. We appropriate the blood over the doorposts of our homes, over the doorposts of our hearts. Oh, God, over the thresholds of our homes, over the thresholds of our hearts, God, we appropriate the blood. We appropriate the blood that is on our property line from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Oh, God, we appropriate the blood. The front, the back, the left, the right, we appropriate the blood. We thank you for the cross this morning. Hallelujah. The north, the south, the east, and the west, oh, God. The front, the back, the hallelujah, the... Uh, left and the right, oh God, we appropriate the blood this morning. We thank you for the blood this morning. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for being a restorer. Thank you for being a restorer. Thank you for being a restorer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just God, I will say, Hallelujah. Bless your name. Thank you for being a restorer this morning. So, God, I thank you. For everyone who needs a re restoration in any part of their lives today, need to be forgiven, God. Clean hands, a pure heart, God. Souls that are not lifted up to vanity. God, it all starts from fear. It's all rooted in fear. We bless your name this morning. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God this morning, beloved. You know, I struggled a little bit on how to address this topic this morning. And uh, good morning, Yvette. Good morning, Krishan. Good morning, Ava. Hallelujah, God. Those of you, glory to God. Good morning, Robert and Joanne. I pray, tag somebody, share this. I believe this word is going to bless someone this morning. I tell you, I, I was starting to say that I struggled with how to present this word because I wasn't sure how to title it, and I'm not still not sure that the title I gave it really is going to do it justice. Because the word, what, 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 what the word is accountability. Now, it's not so much the accountability when we start talking about being accountable um, to our pastors, though we should be, and our leaders, um, or our spouses, um, but it's it's why we don't want to be accountable. It's the why. And and I was with a friend yesterday, Tracy Denmark, and I had presented her with a question. 
some time ago. I had presented her with a question. And the question I presented her was, I guess it was more of a statement. Whatever it takes, God. Oh, my God. So, I presented her with this thought. Because she's quick, like me, to resist a compliment. Um, a compliment regarding her greatness. She's she's a she has a brilliant mind. She's extremely creative. Um, yeah, but doesn't want credit. Doesn't want um, outward exposure <coughs> to that. And she said to me, she said what she realized, good morning, good morning, um, that really what it was, was that she didn't want to be accountable for her greatness. And that hit me. Because I've been transparent with you all over these months, sometime, and in teaching over Facebook or whatever, that my fear was not failure. My fear was the fear of success. That was my fear. Yeah, thank you, in Jesus' name. And so, when she said that about being accountable to this greatness, I struggled with what to title this morning's message, this morning's prayer focus this morning's teaching and we're accountable for the call and when we don't want to be accountable for the call we resist being accountable for and to the call it's because we don't want to be accountable it's not about being accountable to your pastor, there's an accountability there, but he's not with you when you're at home. He's not with you when you know you're you're online doing something you ain't got no business. He's he's not with you when um, you're being tempted by that man or that woman to do something that you should not be doing, having sex outside of marriage. He's not with you when you're lying, stealing, or cheating. Your pastor's not with you. Your pastor's not with you when you're having outbursts of anger, when you're struggling with unforgiveness, when you're cussing people out on, in your car because you got road rage. Pastor's not with you. Sometimes your spouse isn't with you if you're married. And so I really pondered that as I sat there with her to the point that I knew I had to leave at a certain time anyway, but... I was ready. I needed to go. I needed to go so I could really think about what this meant. To not be accountable to the call. And Tuesday, and anyone else under the sound of my voice, maybe that's why you haven't seen the heights the, to, the, to the degree that God wants you to go. I've had successes. You've had successes. I've had successes in corporate America, in ministry. But not wanting to be accountable. And it's not even about not wanting to be. It's the fear of it. It's the fear of it. It's the fear. I remember years ago saying I was sold out for God. And I am. I am. But have I put it all in? Have I put it all on the altar? Have I put it all in God's hands? Have I have I just laid it all out there and said, whatever it takes? I'm all in. Jesus. So, this morning, we're going to talk about the accountability to the call. And when you don't take accountability... To the call. The call of even being a Christian. The call of even being a believer. The call of being a leader. The call of being an evangelist. The call of being a prophet. The call of being an apostle. The call of being gifted. The call of being anointed. Good God Almighty. There's an accountability when God has put this greatness in you and you don't want to walk in it or you're fearful to go 
all in. And so you limit God. Limit. You limit yourself. You really can't limit God. I guess you can, you can, you know, I guess you can limit God because God's trying to do something that you won't let him do. And so when you do not, when you are not ready to accept the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the accountability, I need you, this is looping on my end. So if that's what you guys are seeing, immediately start rebuking it and pleading the blood because we take authority over the prince of the air that's messing with this message. He, yeah, mm -hmm, here he go. So the accountability to the call, whatever the call is, whether it's to be an usher at your church, whether it's to be the worship leader, whether it's to sing in the praise team, whether it's called to the office of the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, <coughs> the apostle, whatever it is. If it's, you know, whatever, whatever that thing is that God has called you to do, that God has anointed you to do, and you... There's a part of you that shrinks back. There's a part of you that won't go all the way. There's a part of you <coughs> that that is fearful of what all does that bring. And so, I go from understanding years ago that my fear of moving forward and doing all the things that God has called me to do in the season he tells me to do it was because of fear. The fear of success, the fear of what people were going to say, you're doing too much, you know, you, you stretch too thin, uh, it don't take all that, but then God delivered me from that, glory to God, and it's been a process, it's been, it's been faith to faith, and it's been glory to glory, it's been a process, because everybody's not going to understand your calling. They're not going to understand your faith. They're not going to understand why you do what you do to the degree and the level that you do it. I have a friend. I have a friend. Uh, we, we're not, we don't communicate like we used to, but she has the gift of helps. And I would watch how she would help. Gift of health and the gift of service. And I would watch how she would help. And I would feel like people were taking advantage of her. And one day the Holy Spirit said, that's her gift. That's why you don't understand it, because it ain't your gift. I will help people, but she has the gift of health where she extends herself to a place that I'm like, girl. But it's also, you know, finding balance so you're not taken advantage of and misused. But the accountability to the call, the accountability to the gift, the accountability to what God has called you to do. We first have to be accountable to him and then to man. So the scriptures, there's several scriptures and anyone who's listening under the sound of my voice, I'm going to ask you to put these scriptures in because I, there wasn't just one. I may go back after the teaching and add them, but there wasn't just one. There were several that God started ministering to me about. And ultimately what I want to talk to you about is your greatness, your greatness. And when you are not walking in, no when you are not accepting your greatness, acknowledging the greatness that is in you, it is because you don't want to be accountable to it. Because with greatness becomes response, re responsibility and accountability. Be faithful over a few and I'll reward you with much. This, this little bit that he's given you. We say we want much. We, we say we want more. We say enlarge our territory. But the accountability. When God starts enlarging your territory and, and you walk in a store and people are like, oh my God, Evangelist Yvette. Oh my God, Pastor such and such. Oh my God, Sister Lofton. Oh my God, Woman of God, Brother Billy. Enlarging your territory simply because your face is on social media. Because you've communicated a message. <clears throat> because you've taught something or you've preached something. You said something that was to someone profound. And they grabbed it and now they are following you. Accountability. It's the accountability of when Jesus will walk into a village. He will walk into a community. That either demons would tremble. Good God Almighty. Or people would... would Try to shut him down so he wouldn't say what he needed to say. 
or they would run to him or they would deny him. You're accountable in all of those areas. The word says in 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, he says, you have already won the victory, beloved. You've already won the victory over people who are denying Christ. You've already, this is because in chapter early in, in 1 John chapter 4, he talks about those who will deny Christ, those who, who don't believe in Christ. He said, you've already won the victory over them. You, you already run the victory over the Antichrist. You've already won the victory over those who will come and try to deceive you and say that they are God. They are Jesus. He said, you've already run the victor, won the victory. He said, <clears throat> because the spirit that lives in you is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. The spirit that lives in you is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. So that tells me that the spirit that lives in me is great. So because something is in me that is great, then there is a greatness that is in me. That God is calling me to a higher place. Greater depths, higher heights. It's in you. Your greatness is in you. You can't deny it. When you pray, it's not when, when God uses you to pray. When God prays through you, people are broken. When you sing, when you use your gift. To be, to be in worship and to exalt God and to worship God and to extol God. People's hearts are, are softened to receive the word. When you preach, when you teach, when you hug, good God. There's a friend that, of mine that when they hug me, I, I'm just broken. I, I feel like waiting to exhale. And I just, it's in you. However God wants to use you, the greatness of God is in you for you to be used. That was 1 John chapter 4. Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist Yvette. John chapter 14, verse 12 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me, that's Jesus. He said, these same works you will do. He said, and as a matter of fact, you're going to do greater than these. He said, because I'm going to the Father. <coughs> now we know when Jesus went to the Father, he sent the Comforter. And the Comforter is Jesus, is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit moved in us who believes, who called upon the name of the Lord unto salvation. John chapter 14, verse 12. He said, you're going to do greater works. Because I'm going to the Father and I'm sending the Comforter. I'm sending that, that he who will teach you all things. He will, will show you and guide you and be the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your pathway. There is a greatness in you. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. Because the Holy Spirit is Jesus. And because the Holy Spirit is God. There is greatness. Great God. Great God, all the songs we sing about how great and awesome he is, all of that is in you. You are great. There is greatness in you. And we cannot fear anymore after today, April 24, 2018. We can't, we cannot fear our greatness. Now, does that mean that because you acknowledge and recognize your greatness, that you're called to preach. That you're called to preach. You're called to preach. And you're going to preach in a mighty way. You're called to teach. You're called to evangelize. You're called to, to win soul. You're called, whatever your call is. You're called to be a great surgeon or an awesome attorney. A, a mighty judge. A, a great congressperson. Whatever it is that God has called you to do. Does that mean that you just step out and launch? No. You still need to be trained. You still need to be equipped. There are things you need to be educated on. But you have to first accept your greatness. You got to accept it. You got to acknowledge it and accept it. We, we sing, and that's right. We sing about, he's a great God, really? And we forget that that great God is in us? 
And so what do we do with our gifts and our talents and our abilities? We shrink back. We give him just enough. We do just enough to be acknowledged as a preacher. We do just enough to be acknowledged as a teacher. We do just enough to be acknowledged as an evangelist. We do great just enough. Where, where I probably see people who I would even, I was about to say maybe being a parent. And we see mothers or fathers who go to the extreme, who go the extra mile for their children. But that doesn't necessarily mean you've accepted your greatness as a parent. What you may have done is accepted, accepting the greatness, acknowledging it, accepting it, and being accountable to it. That doesn't necessarily mean that you've accepted it, acknowledged it, accepted it, and you are accountable to it. What it may mean is that you just receive the responsibility of it let me help you you can be a great husband you can be a great wife first peter chapter 2 verse 9 says you are you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation a people of of god's own possession that you may proclaim the excellence of who called you out of darkness and into this marvelous light. The only reason <coughs> that we have been called out, the called out ones, that's the only reason we are the called out ones, is so that we can proclaim the excellence of God who called you out. The excellence of the great one who called you out. The excellence of the great one who lives in you. So, therefore, when you acknowledge, accept, and are accountable to that excellence, you will, be a, you will acknowledge your greatness. Oh, my God. This did something to me. This did something to me that when it started getting late last night and I was reading these scriptures and meditating on these scriptures, I was like, let me go to bed so I can get up on time and be on time for 5 a.m., that when I woke up, I woke literally straight up to say, oh, okay, wait, I got to get back into this work because I need, I need to, I need for you to speak to me, Lord, because the people need to understand. You got to acknowledge it, your greatness. You got to accept it, your greatness, and you got to be accountable to it and for it. And when we don't, the only reason is fear. Fear of what that means. Fear of the success of it. Fear of your greatness. Now listen, I ain't talking to the people who raggedy. I ain't talking to you. And I'm not even talking about sin right now. I'm talking about you've been called to do something, but you won't study. You won't pray. You won't get equipped to, to know what, what it is you need to know. I said the other day, whatever it is, that you need to be doing, you need to equip yourself, you need to prepare yourself. Business people, whatever your call is in ministry, whatever it is, you need to be working to develop that. You need to know every aspect of what you're called to do. Will you know every scripture if you're called to preach or teach the gospel? No, but you need to have a good handle on it. So if you need to go take a class, go take a class. You Listen, you don't want the person who's talking about they're the surgeon and they, didn't, they got an F or a D or was skipping classes or cheating. You don't want them cutting on you. <laughs> God Almighty. You want them to know all aspects of the anatomy, but there's an area that they specialize in. Genesis 12, Genesis 12, Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. The Lord said to Abram, this is before he called him Abraham, I'm talking to you about the greatness that is in you. He said, go from your country, leave your people. In verse 2, this is where it gets real good. He says, and I will make you a great nation. <coughs> Can you accept that, Sister Yvette? Can you accept that, Sister Lane? Can you, can you accept that? Can you accept that, Sister Hughes and, and Brother Walls and, and, and all of you who have logged on this morning? Can you accept that God says he will make you a great people? 
and he will give you a God, Jesus. Can you accept that? Can you accept that this is what God wants to do because greatness is in you? He's called you out. That's what he was doing here with Abram. He called him out from his people. And I'm not telling you to leave your spouse. I'm not telling you to leave your kids. I'm not telling you to leave your family. I'm not telling you to leave your job or your church. I ain't telling you to do none of that. Hallelujah. But what he was saying was, I need to call you out for purpose. That means I'm going to set you apart from maybe some of the people I just listed. That you can't go to all the family barbecues and everybody's baby shower and you can't do all of that. You, you, you want to be, you don't want to be strange, but God said you're peculiar. And even if you're there, like Paul said, you got to learn to be all things to all people to win them to Christ. So if you're in that setting, you're still set apart. If you're in that setting, you still have an anointing. If you're still in that setting, you still have a calling. You don't put it down. Because you're accountable to it. You're accountable to it. And so you don't get to lay it down. I'm helping myself today. I'm helping Tuesday today. Because this hit me. It hit me something major. When God helped me to understand this may very well. This was me saying. I'm not saying God said it. But it was the thing that quickened in my spirit that I believe maybe God was bringing awareness to me. Maybe this is the reason why you haven't gone all the way in what I've called you to do. Yep, you've done this, you've done that, you've been obedient, you started this, you started that, you completed it, you did it to the glory of God, God's anointing was on it, God blessed it, God blessed that men's conference, God is blessing uh, ATK Publishing and Speakers Bureau, in the name of Jesus, he is blessing us. However, there's a greater level, another level, another harvest. Another day for you to manifest your promises. Another moment, another season for a breakthrough. Come on. We sing all that. We want all this greatness that God has for us. We want breakthroughs. But we're, we don't want to be accountable for them. So what does that look like? Let me talk to you this morning in these last 30 minutes about being accountable, being accountable, being accountable. He said, let me help you to understand the difference between accountability first and responsibility. We use these words interchangeably, but they're not the same. They're not the same. And for years, I, I would say there's a difference. And I'm telling you this morning, bright and early, God started to show me and I started to look up things and research things, the difference between accountability. Let me tell you first, responsibility is to is the answer to accountability. It, it, is an, it, it is being answerable to something that you're accountable for. You, you have responsibilities in what you're accountable to. Responsibility does not always come with accountability. It doesn't. You're given a task to do, but you're not accountable to it. You've just been given something to do. Account but accountability comes with responsibility. Responsibility does not always come with accountability. I hope y'all getting ready to follow me because this blessed me. And I think this is going to set someone free. Because and break the spirit of fear to not to do. Accountability is something you take, um, is what you have res ownership, responsibility in. So I, I'm responsible for the things that are in my preview. I'm responsible for the things that I have authority over. I'm responsible for the, the name of Jesus. Glory to God. So it's my car. And when I had a car note, I was responsible for paying that car note. You got a house, you got an apartment, you're responsible for uh, paying those bills. You have a health issue, you're responsible to take your medicine because it's in your control. 
It's in your bailiwick. It's in what you have authority over. Responsibility is what you have control over. And that's what you're given responsibility for. <clears throat> to manage, to control. You you have res you give you're given responsibility for or over a thing. Follow me. Responsibility is given. And you have to choose to receive it. It's me having this pen in my hand. And I'm saying this is my favorite pen. Now I'm going to give this to you. And now if you accept this, you are responsible to take care of my pen. If you say, no, I don't want that pen. That's your favorite pen. You pay how much for that pen? No, I don't want that pen. You can reject responsibility. Did you know that? Someone gives you an assignment. No, I'm not. I'm not think I'm ready for that. Follow me. God has given you a call. He's given you a responsibility. He's placed purpose on your life. He's placed greatness in you. And you say, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't, I don't want that responsibility. I don't want that responsibility. I, I don't. I don't want that. And this is why I say, and I've said this many times in my relationship teaching, that a lot of times men want to be married. But the responsibility of it, and now I'm going to tell you about accountability. The accountability of it, often they don't want. Most people don't want to be accountable. Because the difference between responsibility and accountability, one of the main differences is that with accountability you have to answer to somebody. You got to answer to somebody. Where you been? What you doing? How you honoring that? Are you honoring me when you with me and away from me? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing as my anointed, as my called out one, as my one I put my greatness in and my purpose? You're accountable to that. That's why I said it's not even about you. The responsibilities that you have at church, there's an accountability to that. But God is seeing it all. He's seeing it all. So we're accountable to him. We are accountable to God. We are accountable to God for our greatness. We are accountable to God for our calling. We are call accountable to God for our gifting. We don't get to put it down. Now with man, the beauty of accountability is a choice in your interactions with human beings. Accountability is a choice. You take on accountability. You say, I'm ready for this. I take accountability. I don't just take responsibility when you are willing. Listen, I take responsibility for that. You know how somebody takes responsibility for something? They don't mind you asking them questions about it. That means they're accountable. They don't mind answering the question. See, remember all the way back to Genesis. Adam, where are you? Well, that woman you gave me. God didn't ask him nothing about Eve. He didn't want to be accountable. He didn't want to be accountable. I'll be responsible for the garden. I'll take care of all of this you put me in control of. But I don't, I'm not, I don't want to answer for it. I don't want to answer for it. I don't want to be accountable. I know I'm helping somebody this morning. And I say this all the time. Honey, from the beginning of time, men didn't want to be accountable. So it's a taught. It's a taught thing. It's an accepted thing. You have to accept this thing. Most people don't want to be accountable, but, but, but I just draw that analogy. It's easier for women. You want to know why? Because we're birthers. We're carriers of life. We have to be accountable for that seed. Good God Almighty, your seed, the seed of our husband that is in us, we are accountable to that. And then it becomes a child, and we're accountable to take responsibility, and we take it on. Many of us with joy. I'm pregnant. We're excited. And so we carry that life in us and we're accountable to push it out. You can't just leave it in there. We're responsible to control what's going on in that environment. Not the husband, not the father. It's the mother. And so you're, you're responsible and then you become accountable because you accept the charge. You accept my pen. You accept it and you say, I take responsibility and I'm accountable for that. Now, accountability does come with levels of 
authority. You are not accountable to your children, but your children are accountable to you. You're accountable to your spouse and they're accountable to you because God said, submit one to another as unto the Lord. So you're accountable to each other. Your children are, you, you're not accountable to your children. You don't have to answer to them, but you are required to teach them and to train them in the way that they should go. And that's your responsibility. I hope you are getting this. Accountability takes ownership. Accountability takes engagement and involvement. Oh my God, Lord Jesus, it just hit me again. The Father Forum, the men's conference. It's taking accountability for your children. You answering to God, he said, a man who does not provide for this child is worse than an unbeliever. You take accountability. You answer to God. You answer to your other brothers regarding your marriage and your family and your children. That's why we, they have accountability partners. That's why I have an accountability partner. But I've said this many times, there's, there's a, and I said it in two different ways. Therapy or counseling is only effective as, as much as the truth that you tell that counselor or that therapist. They can't help you if you're leaving stuff out. They can't tell, help you if you're tell, not telling the truth. And so is it true with your accountability partner. You can't be accountable. Someone can't hold you accountable to something you're not telling them the truth about. You're leaving parts of the story out. Accountability requires transparency. Responsibility doesn't. You don't have to be transparent in responsibility, but you do in accountability. When you're willing to be vulnerable and transparent, accountability for your call. This is why I just started seeing God. Is this why our city is the way that it is? With not just Indianapolis, but all over the country. Because we're not accountable. Number 45 in D.C., he ain't accountable to nobody. He do what he want to do. He say what he want to say. And nobody's holding him accountable. And so we're in these predicaments with these spirits that have been released over this country. Because nobody... Even the evangelicals, the Christians, they're not holding him accountable. But God's going to hold them accountable. <laughs> He's going to hold number 45 and all of those who are not holding him accountable. When you are not holding your children accountable, your grown children, well, the ones coming up too. When you are not holding them accountable, Eli, with your kids doing stuff they ain't got no business, hold them accountable. They are to give you an answer. God said he requires that we, we give an answer for the things that we believe. We ain't got to argue with nobody, but we're accountable for this faith. We're accountable for this belief in Jesus Christ. We're accountable for salvation. We're accountable as believers. We're accountable as Christians. You and me, we are accountable. This is getting me this morning because I'm accountable for this calling. It's not called to be a prophet, amen. But it's not about being able to prophesy. It's not about being able to have words of knowledge and words of wisdom or being a prophetic intercessor. It's not about. It's about being accountable to God. So I told my friend, I said, I get it. I get it. When people walk up to you and they're like, oh my God, Prophetess Tate, oh my God, Minister Tate, oh my God, Dr. Tuesday, there's a part in me that shrinks back. Because what are they seeing? Because I don't, I don't see all of that. I don't. I don't see all of that. And me and my friend girl... Because I live with me, right? And I, I know what I cry out to God about, right? And so me and my friend girl, I told her, I said, you know, but it's probably a safe place sometimes. Ah, Jesus. Hey, ah, that you don't see your greatness because then you won't get puffed up. You won't walk in arrogance. You won't walk in pride. You'll still have a semblance of 
humility, you'll still cry out for God, for clean hands and a pure heart. You'll, you'll still ask God, God, you know, anoint me afresh. Give me a fresh anointing. Take out of me what is in me that is unlike you. You'll still cry out when, when there's a part of you that doesn't, ah, uh, that, that you, you may acknowledge and accept and, and take accountability for the greatness that God has put in you and the call he's put on your life, but you don't let it take you. You don't, ah, uh, you, ah. Uh, God, you don't you don't let it asha take you. Hey, you don't let it take you. Hey, you don't let it take you. Hey, Dabaha. Yeah, You don't let it take you. Hey, you don't you don't you don't put, let yourself get puffed up with the praises of man. Because the same ones who cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, also said, crucify him, crucify him. Oh my God. Accept your greatness this morning, but stay humble. Stay under the mighty hand of God. He'll exalt you. He'll take you there. But you do. You got to acknowledge. You got to acknowledge the greatness that's in you. You got to acknowledge the Holy Spirit that is in you, the great God that is in you. You got to put your back up and square your shoulders and lift your head. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is within me than anything that is in this world. The excellence of God is in me. So that I can proclaim him to the world. Fear is the root of us not wanting to accept our greatness and to walk in it and to just go. Accountability this level of accountability is kingdom. And this this, you know, people wanting to uh, hold you back and to limit you or whatever it is. It's not God. I believe that everything is for a time and everything is for a season. But if God has told you to do this and that and this in that season, you got to obey God. You got to acknowledge that you may be looking at people don't always understand me. And I get that because I don't always understand me, right? I don't always understand what God that hair right there. I don't always understand what God is doing. I don't. When he's telling me to do this and do that and this, and I'm like, God, but that's my gift of faith. That's my bailiwick. That's the degree in which he's told me to launch out, that he's told me to cast my net. And that may not be somebody else's, even in your, you, you know, your spouse. Your friends, your family, your pastor, your best friend, they may not get it. Why are you doing? Why Why are you? Uh, because God told me to. And a good indicator, I, I will say this to you. In your, when you know that it's God and there is obedience to it, there will be, clear, there will be a confirmation, whether it's in scripture, in prayer, in a dream, in a person, there will be confirmation. There will be peace. When you believe you have been called to do something, God has told you to do something, despite what it looks like, despite the resources you have, despite, listen, let me tell y'all something. Most of the stuff y'all see, uh, Dr. Tuesday, Minister Tate, Sister Tuesday, Prophets, whatever you want to call me. Hey, you girl, whatever you see, no, don't do that. But, ha, glory to God. Whatever you see me do, most of the time I don't have the resources to do it. I, I Yvette, is on here, Johnson, great intercessor uh, of God, woman of God, walked alongside during uh, the men's conference, uh, praying, interceding before at the conference the whole time throughout her and her team. And I told them when we met on Friday night to pray over the location and to set up Thursday, God had met the budget of that conference. Hey, Punk and Destiny and Toya. God had met the budget of that conference. Thursday. The conference was Saturday. Now, let me go back two years. In 2016, I had my first women's conference. I distinctly remember I came into that conference in my ministry account with $48. 2016. November. I came into that conference with $48 in the bank. Friday night, the conference opened. 
Saturday afternoon, it was over. Let me, but let me back up. By Saturday lunchtime, God had met the budget of that conference. Only God could do that. Then you fast forward two years, 2018, a woman doing a men's conference. Only God could do that. Over 100 men showed up at that conference throughout the day. Men were lined up before the first uh, opening speaker, Pastor uh, David Hampton. At 9 o'clock, the sanctuary had a great number of the men already there. And a brother said to me, he said, I don't know what your mojo is. I said, mojo? I ain't got no mojo, but it might be an anointing. He was like, that you could get men up on a Saturday to be here before 9 o'clock. I said, that was God. That ain't got nothing to do with me. All I did was be obedient to what God called me to do. I was accountable to the call. I did the work of calling this person and calling that person and getting this done and getting that done. People said to me, and I don't say this to brag and boast. I'm trying to help you to understand being accountable for your greatness, being accountable to your call. And the only reason we don't do it is out of fear. Some of the men in their evaluations, they were like, man, your team is awesome. And, and they were blessed by the women who served. And they said how angelic they looked and they're white. And they just were amazed by the excellence of how God did things. And I said that day when one of the gentlemen said it, he was like, man, y'all, your team, y'all put, y'all put together. I said, yeah, and to myself, that was the team of, 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 of God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit and Tuesday. But that day, the women who came to serve, oh my God, they blessed and they served to the point that the men talked about it in the evaluation. But when God has placed a purpose on your life and anointing a call, the only reason I didn't do this conference in 2015 was fear. But my obedience in 2018 brought this great reward to the point that men are saying, okay, so are you doing it again next year? And if you do it, can you do it for two days? Huh? Men, that's God from a woman. Oh, I'm clear, honey. There are people who thought a woman shouldn't do it. I'm just going to talk about it. There are people who thought a woman shouldn't do it. There are people who probably wanted it to fail so that they could say a woman shouldn't do it. There are some who stood back to say, let me see if a woman can do this. But it's God. It has nothing to do with me or with you. Nothing. It's God. When you acknowledge, accept, and take accountability for your call and your greatness. God will do it. And I give the same testimony. My ministry account, I know it was less than $100 in that ministry, in my ministry account. But, for, but Thursday, Thursday before we walked into that conference on Saturday, because this was our prayer. God, we don't want to owe nobody nothing but love. We want to freely be able to serve these men without me worrying about what the offering going to look like. To make up the difference for this or for that. And God did it. I charge you today. I admonish you today. Acknowledge, accept, and take accountability for the call on your life. For your purpose. For your greatness. And the only reason that you won't do it is because of fear. You got to become sold out in your mentality. The only reason we don't want to do it is because we don't want to have to answer for it or to it. Because he said we're going to answer for the things that we've done in this body. We're going to answer because we're accountable. When you have to give an answer, it's because you're accountable. And so I pray this morning. Yep, pride will keep you. Pride will keep you from... from um, being accountable. I ain't got to answer to nobody. Well, you're going to have to answer to God. If you don't answer to a person, I ain't got to tell my wife where I'm going. I ain't got to tell my husband what kind of money I'm spending. Yes, you do. Cause you're accountable. I ain't got to answer to my mama. Well, if you under his, their roof, yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you 50 and you under their roof, you got to answer cause you under their roof. <laughs> you have a responsibility 
for what for for the environment that God has put you in. I've said it before, and I don't remember who originally said it. Don't let your gifts take you where your character can't keep you. You got to be accountable for those gifts. You got to be accountable. When you are not account, when you fear, hear me, somebody, please hear me. When you fear accountability in the name of Jesus, devil, ain't nobody scared of you. You better stop it. When you do not want to be accountable for your greatness or when you are fearful, I want, I'm the, I want to stop saying you don't want to be because you do, some of us, we want to be, but, but we're afraid of what all that means. You will self-sabotage. You will self-sabotage a good marriage, a great relationship because you don't want to be accountable because you don't want to have to answer to them. Because it makes you vulnerable. Because you got to be transparent. Because you got to put yourself out there. I made the mistake. I told that lie that caused us to get into this. I made that business deal that's now put us into debt. God didn't tell me to buy that that uh, that sixty thousand dollar car. He didn't tell me to buy that three hundred thousand dollar house. I got you. Got to take responsibility and be accountable. And so, pride over its ugly head. You'll shrink back when you fear accountability. You'll shrink back. You'll do just enough, like I said, to keep your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, to be deemed as a prophet, a priest, a pastor, a, well, not priest, a prophet, a pastor, an event. You'll do just enough. you do just enough to be acknowledged as that, but you won't go all the way. You won't get all the way sold out. And allow someone, God first, and then someone in the earth to hold you accountable to that call and that calling and those giftings. You'll shrink back. You'll close the shop. Right? You'll close the shop. <laughs> Glory to God. Nope. I don't, nope. Mm -mm, I don't want to be accountable for taxes. I don't want to be accountable. You'll close the business. You'll step back from ministry because I don't want to be accountable to these people. I don't, because accountability requires transparency. It requires a vulnerability. Now, you don't tell all your business because that's just crazy. But when you're called to people, when you're called to help people, when you're called to be a blessing to people, it requires you to be accountable. Accountable for time, accountable for money, accountable for talent. You're accountable. You'll minimize it. When you when you fear your greatness, you'll minimize it. Oh no, that's all good. No, no. Now you ain't gotta be puffed up. Yeah, I know I slam. I know I preach that word. I know I pray. I know when I sing, pray. No, no. But it's being able to say thank you. God bless you. I appreciate that. I remember years ago, uh, someone was like, Girl, you teach that word, you preach. Oh my God, da 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 da. My God, you pinpoint prophecy, da da da. And I was like, To God be the glory. I give him all glory. And they literally said to me, They said, I said, Thank you. Praise God. Give him all the glory. They literally said to me, I was talking to you. I wasn't talking to God. I was giving, I was saying, You did a good job. But because I knew that pride, like, lurks right up and through, like, is right here. You know, or, you know, he just want me to take credit and I ain't trying to be a glory stealer. I, I said, no, I have to give him glory. Now, there'll be one day that I'll just be able to say thank you. But because I know pride wants to, like, stay on my shoulder. No, nah, you getting off of me. So give God glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. It'll cause you to shrink back. It'll cause you to minimize. It'll cause you to shrink back. And then you won't take responsibility for it when you miss it. When you don't want to be accountable for the calling or you're afraid, the spirit of fear has attached itself to you and you're afraid to be accountable, to walk in your greatness, to walk in who God has called you to be and in what God has called you to do, you'll shrink back and you won't take responsibility for it. God's called you to prayer. He's called you to intercessory prayer. You won't pray. He's called you to be a preacher and a teacher of his word. You won't study. 
I think I've shared this with you and I'm going to get off here because we're over time. But I shared this with you that there was a time that people were saying to me, I mean, it was coming from everywhere. Oh my God, I see you with a ministry like Joyce Myers. People still say it. I see you with a ministry like Joyce Myers. And I, to the point that I heard it so much and it's even quickening in my spirit now. <sighs> that I stopped watching her. I stopped, I stopped watching her. <laughs> Because it was so fearful for me that God is calling me to that. And these were people in totally separate environments. White women. Black women. Black men. And I was afraid of that level of greatness. But now I know it was the accountability was the accountability. So, I charge you this morning to let God speak to your heart, to let God speak to your spirit. And walk in your greatness. Don't be afraid of success. Don't even be afraid of failure because God is with you. And sometimes you have to fail in order to learn, right? And God is so gracious, he won't even let you publicly fail. He's so gracious. He's so loving. So God, I thank you for these, your people. I pray that this word fell upon good ground and that it produces a hundredfold thousand fold fruit I pray that someone heard something about walking in their greatness and being all that you call them to be for greater are you that is within them than anything and that is in this world thank you that the spirit of the living God lives in them and the excellence of you thank you God that you will make them a great people and give them a great name I thank you father that they Acknowledge their call, their giftings, they accept their call, their giftings, their purpose, and we will be accountable to it. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord, and God says the same. We'll be back together next week. God bless you. Tag somebody, share this with somebody, and have a great Tuesday.